Hello everyone, I'm going to be talking about the Haskell Lens Library. Uh, if you want to find the source or documentation for the Lens Library, you can go to github.com slash e-k-m-e-t-t slash lens. This is Edward Komet's GitHub, and he's the author of the Lens Library and a pretty famous Haskell hacker. Um, so, in order to motivate lenses, I'm going to first show an example of Haskell record syntax. Uh, lenses are really great for working with records and nested records, but first let's look at some really simple code that works with records outside of lens constructs. So, uh, first I'm going to talk about uh, this contact list. So what I have is this person record, which is a first name, last name, and age that defines our person, an address, which is your typical address stuff, and finally a contact is a person and an address together. And so uh, just for working examples, I have this contact list, which has all of our friends from Seinfeld, Jerry, Elaine, George, and Kramer. Um, so some common things you want to do with a record much like uh, Java objects are your uh, getters and setters. So let's go ahead and look at what we might need to do to modify the age of a contact. So when we define a lens, or sorry, when we define a record, we get these functions for free that focus rather, that give us uh, access to the fields of the lens. So this age function here and this person function, uh, they give us, you, we can take a look at the type. Age is a type person to int and person is of type contact to person. So you see when we compose these two functions, we have a function from contact to int. Uh, that's pretty much what you'd expect for your getter. Nothing crazy going on here. It's just kind of cool that records give us these functions for free. But now we have this kind of ugliness where we want to modify and increase the age of a contact. So here you see this record update syntax. And so uh, increasing age has is a function of type contact to contact. Uh, in Haskell you can't really modify a uh, thing because we're stateless. We have pure functional, all that good stuff. But we can return a new contact with the field modified. So we have this record update syntax. So increase age takes a contact, and we're going to create a new contact based on C. That's what this guy means here. But we're going to modify the person. So the person for this new return value is defined as P, which is the person of C. But the age of this new person is the old age of P plus 1. So this is kind of convoluted, not exactly what you would want I mean, this isn't very clean, but unfortunately, as far as I'm aware, this is the best way you can update the field of a record. And once you get to nested records, this is pretty ugly. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and look at how the Haskell Lens Library, control.lens, uh, can make this much cleaner, more intuitive for somebody coming from an object-oriented background. Oh, just to demo what's going on here. If we you can see that George is contacts at index 2. So we have George here. If I say get age of George 37, increase age of George, we, oops, increase age of George, we get this new George whose age is 38, all that good stuff. But this is kind of ugly, not very clean. So we're going to look at Haskell's rec lenses to make this just better code and more understandable for your average Joe. So let's go ahead and switch to the lenses branch of my current repository where I've modified the code to work with lenses. So up here we're going to open up uh, contactlist.hs uh, there are some differences here that you should note. 
uh, we put underscores in front of every single field because we get these make lens make lenses function defined in control dot lens that um, for each field that starts with an underscore we will get a lens focusing on that field and so now I'm going to explain a little bit of how how we can make lenses uh, with that make our getters and like increase function work a lot better. So you'll see, uh, I just loaded up main.hs, and because I have control.lens in here, it imports a lot of packages. There's some crazy things going on under the, under the covers for lenses that I'm not going to go into, but know that they're very, very powerful, and I'm only touching on them uh, very, very briefly. So uh, get age, pretty much the same. Get age takes a contact, and we have this combinator that's associated with lenses. And this caret dot is the infix version of view, which coming from Java, you think of this as a getter. So this is c dot get, and then person dot age. This is actually the composition of two lenses. So we can go ahead and do the type of person and see that this isn't the same person that we saw in the previous example without using a lens. This is something a little more complicated. Uh, it can function as the getter by using this view. So if we'd say t view person, oops, yeah. So if we say t view person and then George, it's simply a person. It has type person. So we can use this to be able to get the. Um, focus on the elements of a record just like we could with the functions we got for free previously. But the interesting thing about these things is these guys compose. So the type of person.age is a functor that takes a function that works on ints to f int and a contact and gives you an f contact. So this type is kind of complicated, but no big deal. We're going to just press on and get an intuitive understanding of what's going on here without worrying too much about the types. So composing these lenses, person.age gives us a lens, this, these things in the parentheses, gives us a lens that focuses on the age field of a contact. This is a generic... Um, a generic uh, contact lens, so this will work with anything, but we're taking C and we're viewing the thing that is focused on person.age. So we're, we're viewing through this lens the age value inside the person value inside the contact. So this is pretty much analogous to what you'd see with the Java public fields. You have C.person.age. Very, very similar. Nice, intuitive, makes sense from a Java point of view. So if you remember, this person.age uh, was actually a lens that focused on the age of a contact. And so we can define increase age really, really simply by using this lens and this plus twiddle, which is a combinator given to us by the lens library, to easily uh, modify the, well, when I say modify, I mean instantiate a new one with a changed value, a contact to increase it by one. So now we have person.age focuses on the age field of a contact and we use this plus twiddle one to really increment the age by one. It's really intuitive, makes a lot of sense if you're a Java developer or somebody familiar with object-oriented programming. But the coolest thing about this is this plus twiddle isn't your typical just increment an int because this isn't an int. This plus twiddle actually, uh, I don't even know if you want to look at the type, I'm sure it's Hideous. I don't actually know. This is the first time I'm looking at it. But plus twiddle is an A setter, S T A A. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything to me. So this is a lot of mumbo jumbo. But what's important here is that the intuitive understanding of it is a lot like plus equals that you'd see in object oriented land. So I hope that this small taste of the lens library and how you can use it to make your code look really clean, really understandable, and I guess make your Haskell look more approachable to 
for a object oriented type programmer uh hopefully this has been beneficial to you and uh control.lens has been very very popular in the Haskell community as of late because as you can see it really cleans up your code making this really concise readable line as compared to the record modification syntax we had without lenses so if you're interested in the types and like why this a setter grossness is going on here uh, Simon Peyton Jones the GHC implementer famous Haskell guy has this talk at skills matter and he gives a great explanation of the types and like derivation of lens but please go ahead and just play around with lens and write really nice clean Haskell uh, happy hacking